to this video of Mount Maid here at the College of Mount St. Vincent. My name is Andrew Creel, Associate Director for Admission here at the college, and I am joined by my co-host, Nicole Caronto, and also our special guest, Chris Sumo. Uh, how are both of you guys? Doing well. Doing great. Glad it's Friday. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to get started with a brief interview just to get to know Chris a little bit more, his time here at the Mount, and also what he's doing even after his time at the Mount in his role at Twitter. So to get started with you, Chris, how did you even hear about the College of Mount St. Vincent? Yeah, so I was actually recruited um, out of high school to play lacrosse. Uh, the coach at the time was Dan Mulholland, and he had come to a few of my games. He had reached out to me about the potential to play lacrosse at Mount St. Vincent, and he was always great to me. So it first got on my radar uh, by Dan Mulholland reaching out to me and, and asking if I was interested in potentially playing lacrosse in college. Thank you for that. Yeah. And then also during your time here, you said you were a communication major. What made you choose communication? And then also any professors that made your experience learning here more special? So I chose communication as a major because initially I was interested in uh, a career in broadcasting, sports broadcasting, things like that. And communication is sort of a natural extension. But what I found was how amazing and tremendous the professors within the communication department at Mount St. Vincent were. There's so many to name Dr. Scolo, Dr. Fitzgerald, Dr. Crownover, Dr. Myers. They were all so great and thorough and they taught me so much that I've applied not only to my professional career, but just in some of my interests now that I've graduated. So I felt very fortunate and blessed that I had such a strong group of professors within my major when I was at the Mount. And you mentioned being a communication major and also staying involved on campus at CMSV. You were also involved in lacrosse. So in total, being a student athlete and being so involved at the Mount, what was life like for you as a student there at CMSV? Yeah, so when I'm like busy now at work, I sometimes look back and wonder how I managed to juggle it all when I was in college because I, I don't know how I did it, but it, it was great. I like keeping busy and I like for the fact that I always had something to occupy my time while I was in college. So I loved playing lacrosse. I loved the team. I loved my coaches. I loved, you know, the whole, all of the aspects of it, practice, games, traveling, all of that. And I think it served as a compliment to what I was doing in the classroom because it provided a lot of structure. You know, there was a, a routine to my schedule. There was things that I needed to to plan for and, and, and sort of, you know, keep in order. And that helped me in the classroom because it, like I said, it gave me a structure to what I was doing when I was in college. So I thought being a student athlete was definitely something that helped prepare me for what I'm doing now as well. Absolutely. And that sounds like awesome to hear that you were able to take both of your capabilities, both on the field and in the classroom. But you're also involved in a, a few of our clubs that we have still here at Mount St. Vincent. Can you talk about a little bit about your experience in those clubs and type of things that you did during while you Yeah, were in definitely. So I was a member of the Mount Media Club, which was uh, comprised of a lot of communication majors. And uh, me and a good friend of mine, Joe Esposito, had our own talk radio show, which was broadcast, you know, in the dorm rooms. I think it was like Channel 10 at the time, as well as streamed online. So that was a lot of fun. And it was something that we had a blast doing. In addition to that, in my capacity as a member of the lacrosse team, I was on the student athlete advisory committee, which was sort of a liaison between student athletes, the coaches, the athletic department, and then um, ultimately the NCAA. So I was involved in, in a bunch of different things. And like I said, I don't know how I managed to juggle it all when I, you know, at the slightest thing at work, I, I like throw my hands up and I can't handle it when I'm so busy. And in addition to all of that, I also worked in the admissions office as a tour guide and as an assistant. So I like to think I convinced one or two people to come to the mound. But like I said, I always had something to do when, when I was in school. Yeah, absolutely. It sounded like you did a lot of good deeds uh, telling students about Mount St. Vincent, how wonderful it was. To continue on that, we have the incoming class of 2025. And it's crazy to even hear that every year when we do these videos. For you, from your experience being a student at Mount St. Vincent, being involved in Mount Media, SAC, along with being a student athlete, what words or advice would you give to our incoming class before stepping foot on campus here? At yeah, CMS? it's a great question. I think my advice to any incoming, you know, college freshman, particularly at Mount St. Vincent is take advantage of all the opportunities that are presented to you. You know, people fight tooth and nail and, you know, will do anything to be in New York City and to have this opportunity. And at Mount St. Vincent, you're right in the heart of it. So I would say take advantage of all of the amazing opportunities 
from an extracurricular standpoint, from a career opportunity standpoint, really get involved, find your niche and find, you know, what's going to make your college experience unique. And don't be afraid to try new things. I think that was something that I really loved about Mount St. Vincent is that they had so much to offer. So my advice to incoming freshmen would be take advantage of, of everything the Mount has to offer and get involved, you know, find what you love doing, find your passion. And, and the Mount is great about helping, you know, students do that. Absolutely solid advice and shout out to all of our students in the class of 2025. If you're accepted and in our Facebook group watching this on YouTube or Instagram or anything like that, listen to those tips and take it truly to heart. When you step foot on campus, we have so many people here to help you. So continue to get involved and stay passionate about what you do. And moving on to the next portion of our interview, we'll be moving on to Nicole to talk about your life after the Mount and your current role at Twitter and to find out how you got there, what you're doing now and how successful you've been so far. So tune into the next portion to get started. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Drew. So Chris, tell me a little bit about your current employment position. What are you doing now? Yeah. So I'm a client account manager at Twitter and essentially I help brands plan their advertising strategies um, on the platform. Social media and digital advertising is obviously a growing industry and these brands always need a lot of help in, you know, how they plan for what they're doing, the media that they're buying. And I'm on the Twitter side, helping them, you know, put those plans to life. That's so awesome. And sounds like you are quite busy on your day to day, but are there any previous employment positions as well that you'd like to share with everyone to, you know, show how you got to where you are today? Yeah. So it's actually pretty interesting. When I graduated from the Mount, I actually worked in pro sports for a bit. First job out of college was working with the Brooklyn Cyclones, which was one of the Mets minor league teams. And it was great. It was a really fun job to have the summer when you graduate, but ultimately it wasn't where I thought my true career path was going to lie. And I had a good friend who I went to Mount St. Vincent with that was working at an advertising agency at the time. And, you know, three or four months after graduation, those student loans start coming up. I asked him if there was any potential for him to refer me. And he did. And what I found really quickly after I got hired at Resolution Media, which was the agency he was at, was that, you know, advertising, marketing, media became, I felt that it, had, it, it was my calling. So I was at Resolution Media, which was a social media advertising agency, and I loved it there. I was working with a bunch of different clients, doing the media buying and, and strategy for them, and working a lot with the various social platforms, Twitter being one of them. And I was there for almost four years. And like I said, it was, it was a dream start to my career. I couldn't be more grateful for my time there. But after four years there, an opportunity at Twitter had come up. And like I said, I had worked really closely with the Twitter team while I was at Resolution. And yeah, the opportunity at Twitter came up and I jumped at the chance to join Twitter. That's awesome. So cool. And it's great for everyone to see, you know, how you can start on one path and then realize that, oh, maybe you have a passion for something else and then go into that. Since Mount St. Vincent is in the heart of New York City, we're just a short train ride away from Manhattan. And I know that our Oxley Career Education Program and Oxley Integrated Advising Program work so hard to match students up with internships on campus. Um, did you participate in any internships while you were a student? I did. So to be a communication major, you actually have to intern as part of like the uh, course curriculum. So my first internship when I was at the Mount was at uh, ABC7 in New York. And it was awesome. Uh, I think it really set a really strong foundation for my career because I was working in their marketing department. So it really gave me a sense of what the industry was like, what the field was like, and having a sort of TV background, because while I was there, I was in the TV sales field. It gave me a really strong floor to eventually move on to, you know, digital and social media sales. So it was an opportunity that I got through Mount St. Vincent. And again, the fact that Mount St. Vincent was able to offer that, like I said, it is one of the reasons I'm at where I'm at right now in my career. So I couldn't be more grateful for, for that opportunity. I am so happy to hear that. And I think that our current students today and our prospective students will also be really happy to hear that and to see how all of our employees and faculty and students at Mount St. Vincent work so diligently to be able to get all of the students the best experience possible, both on and off campus. So transitioning back a little bit now to your job at Twitter, what does like a typical day look like for you? What are your primary responsibilities? Has anything changed because of COVID? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. So one of the reasons I like working at Twitter so much is that every day is something different. You know, there's the typical tasks of, you know, managing client budgets and, you know, uh, answering questions and forecasting and things like that. But essentially my day-to-day -day is being a resource to the various brands and agency teams that I work with. So whether it's questions about the Twitter ad buying platform, whether it's questions about their upcoming strategy, questions about upcoming budgets, I'm really there as their account manager to make sure that, you know, their relationship with Twitter is strong, you know, that the media they're planning on buying is, is ready to go and that, you know, 
their strategies are working in concert with what we do as a platform. So like I said, it's something different every day, but that's part of the reason I love it is that, you know, you, you never know what, what's going to happen. For sure. And I'm sure it definitely keeps you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then COVID has changed a lot of what we do. I know Twitter's been in the news a lot about their um, working from home policy and their flexible work policy. So, you know, obviously COVID was a huge impact. We've actually been working from home for over a year now. And the great thing about Twitter is they're actually a company that has a really strong like corporate infrastructure to make that, you know, work where we were able to seamlessly transition to a work from home environment. So I feel like Twitter will be at the forefront, you know, as whatever the new normal is going to be, whether that's, you know, a flexible work from home schedule where people are in and out of the office. But like I said, I was, I was really fortunate that Twitter made the transition to working from home uh, during the pandemic pretty seamless. Yeah, that's so great to hear. And I'm sure it took, you know, a lot of stress off of you when it came time to, you know, deciding what were we going to do? Are we working from home? Or are we working in the office? So really glad to hear that Twitter yeah. worked well with all of its employees. Yep. Yeah. So what does it mean for you to be working for a company you know, as big as Twitter? Uh, you spoke about you know, how you got there a little bit. Did you always want to work for kind of like a big name company? What does it mean? Yeah, so I, I wouldn't say I've always, you know, I always envision myself specifically working for a big name company. I think the great part about working at Twitter is that I feel like I'm in lockstep with the ideals that Twitter has as, a organiz as an organization. Um, and that's really trying to serve the public conversation with a purpose. And I think it's really important for anyone trying to find their career is to find a, a job or find a career that really aligns with your ideals. And I think the ideals of Twitter, like I said, about serving the public conversation and making sure that that institution and the public trust is, is strong is something I'm really aligned with. So yeah, you know, we do a lot from an advertising perspective, but you know, being working for a company that is in line with your personal values and personal principles is really important. So I think that's that's one of the most important things about working at Twitter. Absolutely. And I think, you know, reflecting back to your time at the Mount, one of our mottos is teach me goodness, discipline, and knowledge. So I can definitely hear how the skills and the, you know, all of the different qualities of how to, you know, just be a good person that you learn while you're a student at the Mount, you are able to transfer over into your career today. So really happy to hear that. <laughs> So speaking of the Mount, how would you say you were able to transfer the skills that you learned in the classroom at the Mount to your job at Twitter now? Yeah. So I, I keep in touch with a few professors that I was close with when I was in school. And I tell them all the time that not a day goes by in my professional career that I don't use something that I learned in, in one of those classes. A few examples are like, you know, media criticism and media studies, all of those principles about the history of media across every channel and every platform are things that are hyper relevant to what I do now. In addition to that, some of the presentation skills and, you know, I tell people all the time, advertising, marketing, client relationships, we're in the communication business. And I think the principles of communication, both as like an academic and also as a human discipline is something that I apply to my job now. So just the fact that everything that I learned when I was in school has such a practical application to what I'm doing now is so important. Aside from that, I think some of the principles, like you mentioned, that Mount St. Vincent holds dear also are really, really important to me from a career perspective. Like I said, discipline, diligence, but also applying like those values to what you're doing. So like I said, both from an academic perspective and from a, you know, principle and vision standpoint, I think that's super important. I couldn't agree with you more and I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> so I think you pretty much answered my next question already. Of, do you believe the Mount helps prepare you for your career? But maybe you could talk a little bit how. Without question, I think I always tell people the best decision I ever made was to go to Mount St. Vincent, not because of the memories I made, you know, not because of how wonderful my four years there as a college student was, but because how prepared I felt that I was to enter the quote real world when I left the mountain. And like I said, whether that was through what I studied in academics, through the values that the college instilled in me, and just through the mission statement that I felt was really important to me when I left, I wouldn't be where I am today without the four years I spent at the College of Mount St. Vincent. So, you know, putting it as simply as I can, absolutely. I, the reason I've had whatever success or whatever you want to call it in my life at this point was directly because of my time at the College of Mount St. Vincent. So fantastic to hear. And I think Drew and I can agree as well. And I know that you have mentioned that you have been in touch with a couple of professors still. Are there any, is there anyone specific that, you know, you reach out to every once in a while or any, you know, a group of friends or other mentors? 
Yeah. So the group of friends I made at, at Mount St. Vincent, I'm confident will be lifelong friends. I, I feel like I'll need to give some shout outs to both professors and friends, but all of the teammates I played lacrosse with who were so great, and they'll probably get mad at me if I don't mention them specifically, but I can't talk about how grateful I am for those relationships that I had in college. Specifically, you know, my senior class, you know, my friends like Frank Mataloni, Joe Esposito, Connor McBride, Pat McEnany, you know, we had such a strong bond when we were, you know, playing lacrosse together and just you know, um, off the field too, that it, it was really, a, it made my time in college so great. And then on the flip side, some of the professors that I think were really influential, and I keep in contact with, you know, Dr. Fitzgerald, Dr. Crownover, Dr. Myers, Dr. Scolo, you know, they all had such a huge impact on me that I always want to express to them how much it meant to me both as a student and now as an alumni. So fantastic. And I'm sure they will be so thrilled to hear your little shout out soon. <laughs> thank you so much, Chris, for your time today. And thank you, Nicole, as well, for this great Mount Made episode featuring Chris Sumo here at the College of Mount St. Vincent. My name is Andrew Creel, again, Associate Director for Admission at Mount St. Vincent. And I am Nicole Quaranto, Assistant Director for Alumni Relations and Giving over at Mount St. Vincent. And Chris, we just want to say thank you to you one more time. And of course, if you want to let our Mount family know anything else, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was my pleasure. And, you know, like I said, uh, Mount St. Vincent was so important to me so i'm always happy to, to to tell the story absolutely thank you everyone for watching stay safe and stay healthy bye